This evening, brethren, as we come before the table of the Lord, I'd like to consider a word from Ephesians, actually a thought. Uh, I'm going to extract it from Ephesians 4. Um, there's a few scriptures in this verse, but I'll start with verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but, oh, I'm so glad there's a but there. Mm -hmm. That which is good to the use of edifying, that it, it's talking about the words that you said, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Do you ever think of yourself, ever somebody ask you, well, what kind of a minister are you? I'm a minister of grace. That's what I am. A minister of grace. It means that the words that Apostle wanted the, the saints to say had power. Grace has power. Have you believed? Well, you were given grace to believe. See, grace, every, every, everything that God asks a person to do, if they're going to do it, it has to be accompanied with grace. This table is the same thing. See, we come to this table. Why is this effective? Because there's grace. Anyway, this, this thought here, it, it captured my, my attention that, um, that you can be used as a vessel through your words, through your understanding, in other words, what God, what you've seen of God, what you've understood of God, as you use that, as you minister that, God, grace, can flow through that. Why? So the hearers, the hearers, oh wow, they can be, they can be blessed, they can be built up, they can be edified because of what you've said. Now we've come to this table, we know, we've, we've done this before. To remember the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, his, his ascension into glory. See, the, what, what is all that? This is salvation. We're remembering the price that was paid in order that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But see, we're focusing on the person who brought this about. This person. Now, this is a corporate event. The table targets not just, not just the individual, but actually it targets the body. See, we're partakers, we're partakers together of this. Now, it's passed around. Each, each apostle that night, each, each apostle, disciple, they, they took for themselves of the loaf. They, they, they partook. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. And he passed it. This do in remembrance of me. Same as he did with the, the cup. Drink all, all of, drink you all of it. Everyone partake of this. Do we all, there's, all of us are in need of what's offered at this table. There isn't any member of the body that can function to the capacity that God intends it to, independent from what's at this table. See, the, the, it, it, there's, you might, that you might have life, life, that you might, you might be able to, to know me. See, part fellowship, this is all per, are pictured at this table. Sitting at a table and fellowshipping with Christ. He's here. He's administering this table. Now the apostle knew when he spoke these words that, that see, the, the, what is the need of the body? Well, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed since the day that Jesus ascended into glory and gave gifts unto men. It hasn't changed. Men's perception of it may have changed. But see, this is what he's talking about is, is what's needed. Now, Christ has risen, as exalted at the right hand, that he might fill all things. Now remember earlier in the same chapter, because Paul kind of works up to what he said here. If you look at verse 12, it says, it talks about why these gifts were given to the church. Why? Why would Christ give these kinds of gifts to the church? Remember the apostles and prophets, evangelists, teachers, preachers. Why, why would he do that? I mean, what, what are the functions? Have they lost their place in the, our present age? Well, I think to some degree, Babylon has obscured these so much that you never really get to this part here. Why did he give them? What, what's the purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying, same thing we just talked about, the edifying of the body of Christ. Why? Because if you've got a weak body, it doesn't matter if they come around this table. If you've got somebody who doesn't know anything about Christ, then what are you doing at this table? This table is the body and the blood of Christ. 
We're remembering what it cost. What, what, what did Jesus do for us? Now, what if we have no idea at all? Well, see, you see how Babylon is obscured just to where this table, it, there's no wonder. It's pushed to the sides. They don't know what's here. But see, there's grace here. There's grace to keep on. Keep it on. To keep believing. To keep pressing towards the mark. Because you're fellowshipping. You're actually getting something from this. You're being edified. Built up. Strengthened. Made more fit for the kingdom. The words or communication that comes out of our mouth. See, I like the way Paul ties this. To, he, he, he makes it an exhortation for the individual, but the benefit is for the corporate, for the body. You, see, you, you, do, you give all diligence, but in the diligence, the, 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 the main benefactor is going to be the body of Christ. It's not just for myself. If God gives me a gift and I use it rightly, I won't be the biggest benefactor. The body will. It's for the body, for the building up of the body. So see, we're very careful, and I say that, I thought about that at this table. See, it's, we're very careful. We just don't get up here and talk about past presidents and blah, blah, blah. We're very careful about the, the words we frame or craft because they're going to produce something. Uh -huh. They're either going to rob from the saints and distract them at a critical time, yeah. or they're going to be crafted in such a way that they bring our minds to bear on what occurred the night that Jesus took away sin. He took it away. And see, that's, that's all part of this um, ministering grace to the hearers. I bring this up, and I've already said this, because these gifts that Christ has given to the body, they're designed to make us, they're designed to make us ready to meet him. Now, see, Christ is in the words. He said, he's the word. He remember, he, had, he has written on his thigh, the word of God. Yeah. He hasn't never stopped being the word of God. See, for, for, for a, space, a short space of time, he took upon him the, 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 the form of a servant. And he was, he was faithful and he submitted to what the Father has set him to do. But he rose from the dead. He ever liveth to make intercession for those that come unto him. So see, we've come, we're coming. He's opened this table. He says, come. Come. And we're here now. Why? Why? Because we believe the record that God's given of His Son. We believe that when, what He says, at the, what He'll do at this table, He really will do. Yeah. He really will. This is a table of increase. See, we shouldn't expect just to get what we got last time. See, there's an anticipation surrounds this meeting with Christ that you want to think big thoughts when you come to this table. Because see, there's, there's, there's an abundance. We already, we already heard that tonight. These things have been compacted together, put in Christ, and He's administering. He's giving them out. See, he's the greatest minister of grace. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 16 says, For whom the whole body fitly joined together, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual, effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase in the body. Now I know what Paul meant when he said that. He's, he's, Paul's bringing the brethren to the point to where they can understand what ministry is. What does it mean to minister? I fear many today don't even know what a real minister is. It's not a storyteller. It's bringing the people to the place to where they can see him more clearly. They can, they can actually reach out. It can be real. The time of increase. In the remembrance of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and an exaltation to the throne of God is a sense in which we're spiritually transported to be with Him. That's fellowship. See, you know, if we're seated with Him in heavenly places, and this is, we know this is in the Scriptures, what better time than when we're gathered around this table of remembrance and we draw near with true hearts and full assurance of faith to obtain a blessing. How much, what is a better time than this for the Lord to just give us this vital thing that we need? This, oh, I, I love thinking about this. The Holy Spirit says it like this in Ephesians 2, 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come. See, this, this table is 
it's a forward stance table. We're looking, we're, we're here, we're very much here. But see, our hearts cast forward to the time when we're going to come meet with them and never have to leave again. It, it, it's a picture of partaking, of fellowshipping with Christ. One of these days, we're going to sit down at the table and not have to get up anymore, so to speak. I long for that time when the, the grace, the Christ has worked in you the whole way to glory is exposed. Oh, there's been a lot of grace. A lot of work's already been done on every one of us. But see, we see in part now, but when it's all brought to light, when everything that Christ has worked in you is brought out, oh, see, this table is, is, is going to be shown as a centerpiece of the, of the, the church where the, they gather together to remember him. See, this is why the first century church, they came together to remember him. Why? Because he was at the core of their heart, the core of their thoughts. So see, when we remember him, it's not ever an empty ambition. We don't, it's not ever just a, I hope Jesus shows up. We know him, that he's true, that he'll do exactly what he promised. And I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Let's remember his death again. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the promises that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for this table of remembrance, Father, that we can remember your son, Father, that we can remember what he's accomplished on our behalf and what he's accomplished on your behalf. Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus, for his death, for his faithful submission, and Father, for his um, rising from the dead and exaltation to the throne. We ask, Lord, that you would help us tonight to remember his death more perfectly again and see him more clearly in your son's name. Amen.